All right, so we're somewhere in Pasco County. Yeah. All right, ma'am, you have been entitled to my cowboy hat. The most famous cowboy hat in Florida. I got gotcha. you. We're in Pasco County, Florida. I won't show you guys his faces. Yeah. This is Pasco County, Florida. I mean, we literally just walked 10 feet into this homeless camp and the first thing you see is a needle cap. So that should just give you an idea of how bad the situation is in Florida where it's hard to tell if there's a person in here with all the debris, but um, there may be somebody or not. I can't really tell from here. Um, very hard to tell because there's so much debris. There could be somebody just lying in here. You wouldn't be able to tell. But regardless, uh, this is Pasco County. This is just the first homeless camp as we enter these woods. We did the first homeless camp video in Florida here in Pasco County, and it reached almost half a million people within like the first month. That was incredible. Let me just study this side before I approach it. There's all types of weird stuff going on here. Got to kind of move in slowly. There's just a lot going on here. So there is a larger homeless camp here in Pasco County that the surveyors try to come in and survey it. However, the people in the camp attack the surveyors with machetes. So, and when we came to Pasco County for the first time, we actually tried to enter that camp and we were not allowed entry, which has been kind of weird because we've been able to enter all these homeless camps. But here in Pasco County, the homeless people defend these homeless camps uh, and do not let anybody enter, period. Okay, so the, the understanding of these Pasco County homeless camps is the law can't enter, YouTubers can't enter, surveyors can't enter. They're not letting anybody come in. If you come in, you're immediately uh, attacked. And, you know, me recording it, there's no way to tell um, how the outcome could go. But as you can see, this is an absolute nightmare of a scenario here. Look at this, guys. The smell coming off of this stuff is so horrendous, I can't even explain. But you can see the homeless people drag blankets and whatever they can find into these wooded areas. And I don't know if there's somebody in here right now, but there very well could be. So we have to be very alert to our surroundings. Um, the, size, the size of this camp is just insane. And that's probably why the first time we did these videos, it got so many views because people couldn't believe the magnitude of these Pasco County camps. I mean, they really are absolutely massive areas of destruction. And in these homeless camps, you can find clues to what the people here were doing when they were here. During the daytime, they're going to be out begging, you know, whatever they do out there. So in the daytime, there's less people in here. But in, around this area, there's going to be people camping in the woods and then they know we're here already. Lately, you've been hearing about malaria and other diseases in Florida. Well, here is a outright breeding ground for these types of diseases. It's kind of perplexing to just look at the collection of debris that's in here. To think that in the United States of America, a place like this even exists. And then that there's hundreds of these camps. And, you know, it's crazy and again some of these camps if you would try to go in them here in pasco county they're not even letting surveyors police anybody you know you can't just enter their homeless camps um so part of the process we're going to try to get into today is trying to enter homeless camps that are inhabited uh this one looks like it might have been abandoned or they're not here right now but we're going to try to enter the largest homeless camp again and hopefully this time they'll let us in. We don't know what we're going to see in there, but on this video, we're going to try to enter these larger homeless camps. That last time we were here, we were told off camera, I didn't want to record the process, but we were not allowed to enter. But as you can see, these areas are breeding ground for mosquitoes. Everywhere you look, they leave out containers to collect water. So that water becomes pretty much uh, mosquito breeding grounds, pretty much. I mean, I'm already swarming with mosquitoes. 
I mean, they're all over me. A lot of people go straight to politics. I want to encourage you guys to think a little bit more beyond politics. You know, some people say it's the governor's fault. Some people say it's the president's fault. Or, You know, we're not here to argue about politics on our channel. We're here to kind of just see the human side of the situation. I mean, you can see articles of clothing, body washing articles. I mean, we want to just understand the situation and what brings people to live like this. Um, to me, arguing about politics is something kind of elementary about life. I mean, I like to really see the human side of things. And if somebody comes on my channel and they say something political once i'll let it slide but when people come to my channel and they start trying to push a political narrative uh, whether it's the governor's fault or it's the president's fault i don't really care when i see somebody becomes just fixed on politics i eventually delete them off my channel um i want to make my channel a place where we don't say hurtful things where we don't try to i just want to have a place where we can have a real deep discussion and understand these topics without the rhetoric that you can hear anywhere else and i don't mind deleting people off my channel if it goes to politics so the hanging hat of pasco county i just want people on my channel to focus on other elements of this problem you know this problem has existed in florida for years now it's nothing new in fact a lot of these camps aren't even recent or abandoned set camps from the past. Um, but to think that this is what Florida looks like. I mean, think about the environment. Think about the animals. Think about the people that have had to live in these conditions. And we know one thing about this part of Florida, Pasco County, is that the overdose death rates here are some of the highest. And what you don't see here are the camps. A lot of times law enforcement comes in here with knives and they destroy the camp. So... You're seeing a lot of signs of homelessness here, except for the actual camps. And that is because law enforcement comes in here with knives and they shred all the camps to pieces. And then the people leave. And then what's left behind is this. I don't know if that's a legal procedure or not. Somebody on my channel was explaining that that is an illegal procedure. That law enforcement cannot destroy people's property without any type of court you know, order. Or let's say... That they can don't have the right to just come out and destroy property. I mean, you see stuff like this that you're like, how did this even happen? But you can see these are different camps that were shredded over time and then wrapped around this tree. So when you see sites like this, these were sites that at some point were inhabited by a lot of homeless people. And the cops came in, tore up the tents. That's why you see all these shredded pieces of uh, tents here that they turn into whatever this is. If you wonder, what is this? These are actual tents that were shredded by knives. You can see that. Who did it? Law enforcement. Now, there's another quite disturbing aspect about these homeless camps is if somebody dies in these homeless camps, the people that live in them, they do not go about talking to the law. So once somebody dies in these homeless camps... The homeless people simply go on to bury their own dead in these homeless camps. And that's been happening in Florida now for a long time in different counties and municipalities. So what you're looking at here really is a homeless camp. You're looking at a homeless camp that was abandoned here. Now there is a hole on the ground over here and the size of this hole is consistent with the size of a human body and we've already seen somewhere else in florida where we saw something similar to this and these holes are some which you're going to find in most of these homeless camps are sometimes used to discard the bodies of somebody who dies in the camp so i don't know what happened in this camp that led to the situation i would love to hear the locals here in pasco county fill in the blanks but we have a homeless camp that was abandoned. And we know when somebody dies and they overdose, they have to abandon the camp because nobody in the camp wants to talk to law enforcement. 
Here's another odd thing that we find at most of these homeless camps. If you've watched my homeless camp series, you've noticed that a lot of times the people in these homeless camps will have stuff like that, this. In most of our homeless camps, we do find a lot of uh, U.S. government paraphernalia, which would kind of suggest that sometimes these homeless people like to portray that they belong to a government agency. I don't know if that's part of a mental disorder of some sort, but it could also be part of perhaps just the ideology of homeless people, which is a very... Um, So many times the reason these camps get abandoned is simply that once somebody dies in the camp, all the homeless people are afraid of what the consequences could be. And somebody could just simply die from, you know, an infection, a disease, or an overdose, or even something more serious. But regardless of the reason, the people in these homeless camps, they don't want any part of it. So when somebody dies, they immediately flee. And I really don't understand the correlation between the ideology of homelessness and kind of a pro-patriotic theme. I think it's more of a blanket protection that if they have American flags and they have military paraphernalia, that people will be less likely inclined to want to hurt them. So I think a lot of times when we have these stolen valor homeless people and just over-patriotic homeless people is because they know that that's a protection for them like let's say if law enforcement were coming in here or you know it's, it's like a blanket protection for them and we find a lot of patriotic articles in these homeless camps now the law will never know what happened in this homeless camp but the people that were here all know if somebody died or if somebody uh you know overdosed or whatever they all know and they flee I have a lot of people tell me, you know, why don't you wear gloves when you touch stuff? Guys, dude, I'm in here. So it is possible that the combination of police raids or the fact that maybe there's a body in this camp or there has been a body here would be a good reason for the people that were residing here originally to all not want to be in this site. I mean, who would want to be on a site where a body is? Now, there is a new camp over here. Let's see if we can approach it. Okay, so now we're approaching a camp that's clearly inhabited. So at some point, law enforcement came in and cleared the camp. But, you know, a few hundred feet away is another camp. There's definitely going to be people living here because the tarps are up. And if the tent had been evicted, there wouldn't be tarps here. Now, I'm going to announce myself to let them know that I'm here because if you sneak up on them, you don't know what could happen. Hello, coming through. Anybody here? We're just working, okay? A lot of people laugh at me on the videos when I do that. Now, imagine if you were to startle these people and they think you're the law or a surveyor, which they don't want here. You could definitely be in trouble. I mean, in this county, they're attacking them with machetes. So if I see somebody come at me with a machete, we're running. There's no doubt about that. So, of course, I'm going to announce myself. Um, this is a very improvised camp here. I'm going to go real slow and methodically as I approach it, too. Um... I do have somebody nearby who knows where I'm at. I, I send them my, my coordinates. We call each other every few minutes, so there is a safety network in place. But you can see here there's a mattress. And I'm just really approaching this with caution. Um, in this county, the homeless people are not friendly. These are the homeless camps of Pasco County. And despite the fact that this camp was apparently raided... Well, they're back at it again. The smell of fecal matter here is bad. Fecal matter, man. There's definitely an improvised bathroom somewhere near me. I know because there's flies and because I can smell it. So somewhere in here is an improvised bathroom. It could be inside a bag or something. So we have to be really careful where we walk as well. Um, also, all this garbage helps to protect if they have, you know, a personal valuable things they're trying to hide a wallet anything sentimental value they may have in all this garbage they're able to stash whatever belongings they have so one reason that you're going to find that a lot of these homeless camps are, are going to have so much debris 
is sometimes on purpose because this allows them, like let's say during the daytime while they're out begging, well, if they have something to, that's valuable, they'll steal everything from these homeless camps. I'm talking about food, anything. Other homeless people, they, they raid each other's camps, okay? So while the person that lives here is out doing their thing, somebody comes in here and they'll raid their, their camp. They'll steal everything. So by having this much debris, they're able to hide in different places their belongings, and that will hopefully slow down or deter the process of somebody that comes in here to raid this camp, which happens for them. I've talked to homeless people on a constant basis. Keep in mind, if somebody's homeless, they don't really have any rights to this land or the possessions that are on it, so they can't really call the law. There's a police line here. I don't know what it's about, but you can see there's kind of an area here that's taped off. We won't even look at that. Um... But yes, there's there's definitely so this area at some point got taped off, so there might have actually been a body back here buried. Um, you can see the tape. So at some point, it is definitely possible that there was a body back here, and they decided to you know you can tell people been digging through here, so it's definitely possible that at some point there was a body buried here. The police might have dogs that can smell and you know equipment. I don't know how they find it, but this site has a very you can see there's a hole here and the animals have been digging up this hole we're actually standing over a a garbage pit you could say where they were burying garbage and literally i mean how could you know if there is somebody buried in all this crap but it's the camps like this that are abandoned that give us the best clues about what's happening in these camps because when there's people living in them you don't have the opportunity to really explore any further so yes the mystery of why there's so much clothes is because at some point this was a large encampment law enforcement did some raids people fled and now oh, oh crap it's touching my head okay so see how they booby trap this see this there's a trail okay you guys see that there's a trail and hanging off the trail is this piece of iron and at night they'll actually put fishing hooks on these and you got to be really careful it hit my hat but let's say you hadn't been wearing a hat. You know, they'll put a fishing hook which is right in the center of the trail. You can't see it because it's brown. It blends in perfectly. But that could have definitely taken your eye out. Kind of a clever little disguise there. But here we have yet yeah, the remains of another camp. Maybe a female for sure. You can see they had a little bonfire going. And they were making out of palm branches little, little decorative things that they settle people. You can tell at some point there was an actual camp here because the tree scarred up. So this is a, t a tent that was discarded sometime back so there was definitely a female living here and this female was drinking a lot of dr peppers there's a beautiful gated community here in pasco county let's go see what's around the back literally guys all it took was just walking behind a gated community and as soon as we enter the woods oh look at that beautiful butterfly we're in a homeless camp Crazy to think that here we are behind a beautiful gated community and this small little wooded area right out the back uh, and it's just signs of homeless encampments in all directions. Can you imagine you move to Florida to be inside of a gated community, right? And next thing you know, you have a homeless camp behind the house where you live and you know, they're coming to your shed at night stealing stuff out of your tool shed or I mean, this isn't a solution for the homeless people that have to live in these conditions, but it's not a solution for the people that are homeowners either because nobody that has a home wants to have a homeless camp out back. I mean, that's common sense. But here we have, clearly there's been people, and here comes the police, and they do this. See, who does this right here? This is the law enforcement. So this is somebody who had a share here. Law enforcement came, and they ripped it to evict them from this site, and... I'm not going to lie, this does look like straight up possibly paraphernalia right here. Um, and I know I shouldn't be touching this without gloves because it's probably got F on it. Um, but you can tell that this is definitely paraphernalia right here. I mean, this is a pipe. This is straight up paraphernalia here. I understand the homeless people in their situation. And I, only, I also understand the homeowners. If I was the owner of one of these houses right across the street. I wouldn't want homeless people 
you know, smoke an F behind my house. That's horrible crap, man. Horrible crap. So, guys, a lot of times you guys think I'm just one side. I see everybody's side of the store. I see law enforcement. They're doing their job. I see the homeless people. They ain't got nowhere to live. I see the homeowners. Hey, if I was a homeowner, I wouldn't want a homeless camp behind my house. Are you kidding me? With people taking... Imagine people you doing F behind your house. Not a chance in the world, but you can see the law enforcement came through here. Sliced up all the camps. The reason they're sliced up like that is because law enforcement came in and with a knife cut it all up. And is that legal? Destruction of property probably isn't legal. My finger's tingling. Oh boy, that stuff is scary. You know, you guys are right. I should be wearing gloves. You think about the fact that you shouldn't even touch this stuff because it gets in your system and these people are smoking it. Unbelievable. That's pretty straightforward, guys. We're looking at a pipe, you know what I mean? I wouldn't want, if I was a homeowner, a pipe near my house. There's a gopher tortoise that had a nest there. I don't know if it's still alive or not. Let me get this garbage out of the way in case it's still there. It doesn't get a... It looks like somebody caved it in. Looks like somebody tried to cave in the turtle nest. That's pretty crappy. Uh, but gopher tortoises are protected. And if a builder or developer wants to build on this site, those turtle nests, they'll come in first and they'll make sure they kill all the turtles. Every single... See here, this could be a sinkhole, but it could also be somebody pushing in the... What do you call it? Pushing in the, uh, the turtle caves. They squat them so the turtles die. Because if they're going to build here, when the inspectors come out, if there's any turtle nest, uh, the gopher tortoises are protected in Florida. This is a glass bottle. And glass bottles are usually worth a little bit more than plastic bottles. Look at this, Bacardi. Limon. What's this, $21? So, I mean, if I was homeless, I wouldn't be spending too much of my money on drink. Um, sometimes you just got to be real. And I got homeless people that watch my videos. And I got law enforcement that watches my videos. And... I'm a compassionate person. I see everybody's side of this story. My job is just to bring you the articles. You know, here's a basket from Publix. That's stolen property. So we can see how this is detrimental to the businesses as well that are in this area. Um, and you can actually make out to the woods the houses on the other side. So can you imagine, you know, here you are. You buy a half a million dollar house in Florida. And behind your house are all these homeless camps starting fires. Now, this brush here in Florida, this stuff lights in a heartbeat. This isn't like uh, other states. The vegetation in Florida, it lights up pretty quick. Looks like, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I have to see what the sign's about. Let's see what it does. It's like a giant billboard here. Let's see what it, what it was for. I have to know what it was about. <laughs> I'm just curiosity got to know. Let's see what it's about. It is a political advertisement for approved by Kirk Browning, Republican for the superintendent of schools. So that's, I, I, you wouldn't believe how much political signs I find in this county. This county is just littered with political signs. It really is. And these homeless camps are full of stuff like this, especially here in Pasco County for some reason. But the sign made a very good... I don't know, bed or a wall for a homeless camp. Ironic, right? <laughs> kind of, uh, when they made this sign to advertise somebody who wanted to be the superintendent, did they really think, uh, you know what's interesting? I had no idea that somebody that, so this is a superintendent of schools is actually backed by a political party. I had no idea about that. I thought the superintendent of school was a guy who qualified to be a superintendent of the school. Turns out he's actually backed by political parties. No, you, what a mess. I mean, to think that somebody who's put in power, well, that's not power. That's a job, I think. I'm not picking on any particular party, but do you guys really think that a superintendent of a school is something that a political party should be funding? I think the most qualified guy should be the one to get that job. It turns out that the superintendent of schools is a political position that is voted in the power i thought that was whoever qualified to be a better teacher or whatever the crap i had no idea that superintendents of schools were politicians basically i didn't know that um that's even crazy to think that 
even the education. Whoa, watch this phone in the hole. The education system uh, is a political thing. Homeschool your kids, people. You know, regardless of what political party it is, they're shoving garbage up people's heads. Notice that there's a cactus on that trail. If you walk up in here, this is some type of booby trap, I think. <laughs> but I personally had no idea that superintendents of schools was a political occupation. I thought that was a like a job. Like, who's more qualified? Nope. You know, I have mixed opinions about slicing a homeless. I mean, if they're deep in the woods, they're trying to hide deep in the woods. I don't know, man. I can't really say. If, if I was uh, hiring for somebody, if I was working for somebody else, and part of my job included cutting up homeless people's tents, I'd quit my job. I'd tell you straight up. Couldn't do it. No, I'm not anti-homeless or pro-homeless or anti-law or pro-law or whatever. The homeless people let me interview them and talk to me. The cops don't. So I'm making money with the homeless people. I'm not making money with the law enforcement. I send them emails and I say, hey, this is what I do. I like to interview you guys. I like to get press conferences. They don't even reply to my emails. The homeless people, I meet them on the street, buy them a beer, and they talk to me for half an hour. So the homeless people help me make money. And I'm not embarrassed of that one bit. Not in the least bit. I help them. They help me. We're both winning. I've been trying to get uh, interviews with officials since I started this channel many years ago. And the only real official that I've ever been able to interview, Donnie Hammock up there in Tallahassee, Alabama, was the only public official that uh, actually let me interview him. So if they're still watching or they're still around, shout outs to them. But, you know, other than those officials in Alabama, here in Florida, I've never had officials reach out. As soon as I landed in Alabama, the public officials up there helped me start getting interviews and learn about the history of their towns and the things they needed but that's up there in alabama where they don't have a lot of uh you know they really don't have that access to media in alabama but here they got fox news they got nbc they got all that so they don't really care about a youtuber here but when i was in alabama the public officials up there they extended their hand to me right off the bat i mean as soon as i landed in alabama we immediately got interviews with public officials in the area and we weren't even from there and then people here in Florida got the nerve to criticize California. Um, like if California was any better or worse than what we got. I mean, the drug overdose rates in Florida are twice higher than California right about now. You know, the, right now in Florida, our drug overdose rates are two times higher than California's roughly. 1.4 is of last year, but this year it's going to go up higher. Um, you know, Florida's in a crisis and, you know, instead of acknowledging that there's a problem all right guys this is us 19 the most notorious road in florida and we're going to try to enter the most dangerous homeless camp in florida that i've encountered because all the other homeless camps let you enter this homeless camp has uh lookouts you can say in the front and if you try to enter they usually stop you so Last time we came, I'm not going to elaborate too much on the details, but we were not able to enter. But we're definitely, uh, this is the most notorious place in Florida. All right, ma'am, you have been entitled to my cowboy hat. The most famous cowboy hat in Florida. I got you. That going to keep the sun off you? All right, have a beautiful day. All right. All right, guys, so we're almost to the homeless camp entrance. I'm a little nervous, and I did. Um, ooh, it's so hot out here. It is All right, so guys, hot. let's do this. Yeah. I mean, you gotta stop. Yeah, so I won't show you guys' faces. Yeah. Okay. So how long ago did, did law enforcement come in here? I tell you the truth, I didn't live in here then. Okay. I was living in... Uh, I was living in another place. <laughs> just before that, I used to own a place over a couple of streets over, a couple of blocks over. Okay, so you... I owned two properties, but one I was a co-owner of, uh, but my family slept in my name, but it was. Okay. So... But Pasco, now, yeah. that that's what happened. Pasco considers them undesirable, 
as people come in and sabotage their home, set it up so it looks like they're always, you know, hijacking crap. Cause oh, they set it up. And it's like leeches. So the, a lot of the... the leeches on you. Okay. And there's another thing, is it? In this county, yeah. we've had a, we had a sheriff mm -hmm. that was instituted in 2011. Yeah. Nobody, nobody's really ran against him that wasn't part of the scheme. I mean, yeah. no, you don't see that happening in Florida. I mean, it's like this, this is... Undisputed? Yeah. And it's like, you know, he's he's up for indictments and other kind of... It's like, what the hell? And then you look at how Pasco is connected with these other uh, other states and counties. Yeah. And it's not... It's not unified. It's not a United States. Yeah. It's a divided state. Right, because one county will make laws. They'll make the homeless people move into the next county. So it's like, let's say there's a problem here in Pasco. They'll, they'll kick you guys out of Pasco. Then all you guys move to Hernando. And then Hernando makes laws. And then all you guys move to Hillsborough. And it's a never-ending yeah, cycle. Yeah, you're going to try and push us right out of the state. But, right. you know, hey, Florida doesn't want you to live here. They just want you to come and spend your money. Right. Um, at least that's the, you know, everybody wants, it's all interest about money. You've got to make it, you know, I yeah. realize you got to make a living. You yeah. survive. you got to be able to have the necessities of life. Yeah. But they take it away from you. Right. They don't even give you that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want it. A cell phone is great, but, you know, water will be good. Yeah. Access to water and electricity. That would be great. Yeah. You know, I can take a shower every day. I can maintain my health. But they don't want us to maintain our health. They want us all to die. <laughs> or pay. Like a good, I love it, brother. You'd be surprised <laughs> in, in, in the uh, yeah dumpsters around here and right. stuff. In it. I don't do it myself. Every once in a while, I go with somebody that you know yeah. that happens. Well, let me check this dumpster. You know, I have friends to do that. Yeah, tell my mom used to do that. It was like all right. I yeah. used to scrap, so I know all about but, it. Yeah, it's I good. was in Naples. I would find all types of crap scrapping. Yeah, that's basically so. Are there people out here that are, uh, let's say, mentally disabled or mm -hmm. that are, uh, let's say, like? Elderly and just... They're, they all are. There are people even in homes. I mean, you go anywhere you go, I can point out 100 people. Yeah. I'll point out 98 of them that are mentally yeah. disturbed. Sorry, mentally the society disturbed. is doing that. Yeah. Lo uh, prescription crazy. medications. The, but they but started yeah, everybody. But the drugs that we've been forced to take, yeah. the, the media's brainwashing, because, you know, hey, Goebbels still showing his work. Yeah. You know, it's... It, we don't even realize how indoctrinated we are into a society that's really not beneficial to perpetuation. Yeah. We're not we're not here, you know, to keep going. We're here to just drop out. It's like, what the fuck? Excuse so, my language, but that's yeah. the way it goes. So you had properties at some point. Yeah. Um, I grew up in this town. Gotcha. So from having properties to being homeless, um, how, how does that transaction happen? Like, how do you go from being... Well, it's easy. They just, you know... First of all, you don't have an income that you can really consider an income. I yeah. Mean, I, like, even that? if you have your house paid off, you still got to make a living. And you still have to pay the taxes. And uh, water, light, all that. <laughs> yeah. And it's, the weird part about it is electricity is free. You can pull that out of the air. Give me a quote. Three types of... Three anodes and a, and a battery. We got electricity. Mm -hmm. But then they're not making money off you like that. Yes. And then water should be... Like, water is free. It free? rains. It's a dollar ninety nine a gallon here, or dollar no, it's three dollars a gallon. Excuse me, or is it almost four? I forget now. So this was a camp that had I don't know how many people were here. There was a lot of people back here. There was here. a lot of people here. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to put a number on it, but there was a lot. There I mean, was a there lot. Was a, there was another one over off of Old Dixie, just before Sioux Pines. It was in there, and that stretched across all the way to New York, to nineteen. Gotcha. So and all the people like that were here, they all have to go be homeless. They're still homeless, right? Yeah, some of they're them still homeless. Get places and they, they last for couple of months and, yeah you know either. so they're still homeless so what do you do they make them leave this wooded area now they move down the road to another wooded area you didn't really solve anything nope no you just push it off to the side it's like now it's know, somebody else's take problem a valium for, de for depression and stress yeah I'm sorry all it's like straightening out a silk sheet you're gonna yeah. have rumples at the end um i don't know it's just it would be better off if they could took into consideration a lot of the laws are meant to, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. the making of laws beginning with slavery. That's yeah. the problem. <laughs> All right. And then so, when the coding comes in, everybody's interested in the money. I mean, hell, I yeah. watched my property go from 9000 to 93000 Yeah. And I'm like, and by that time, there were so many fines on it, I couldn't even afford to pay, think about paying for it. Yeah. 
But I had a lot of help in doing that. A lot of people are doing Did you ever see people in these homeless camps that are like, they're not addicts, they're just people that you feel like maybe they don't even deserve to be, like maybe a they're lot. men. A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. There's quite a few, actually. It's, it's like, the only reason that That's a bad in shirt, bro. In, That's a bad shirt, man. I just bought it. I wore it one time and it shrank. Yeah. No, there's a lot of people out here that, you know, the only reason they're out here, and it's the only reason you can't find a way up out. There is no way up and out. There's no way out of it. No. I mean, they, if once you're pushed out of an area, yeah. everybody else thinks, oh, that's the way it is. It's like, yeah. it's stereotyping. I mean, hey, they profile here in, in Pasco. If you get a backpack and you're riding or walking on the road. Or a bicycle. They're pulling you over and strip searching you, basically. Yeah. So, I mean, people, so, oh, oh, come ask you this. Like, they also, I had heard it, but I hadn't seen it today. I saw, do they actually come in here with knives and cut up your tents? I've that seen too. videos. You heard that? that? That's what got me involved in trying to, that's how I lost my property. Yeah. That was the beginning. They actually come in here and like cut your tents and stuff. That's I, not they legal. Haven't been, they haven't been in here yet, but I But that's not it. legal though because it's... I haven't it's, seen it in real yeah. life. I have seen it on somebody's camera. Yeah. That they recorded as they were running from the woods because they were being chased by big burly guys dressed like yeah. ninjas. And I've seen the same ones hanging from ropes above my garage one day. When yeah. I I'm gonna run out of here, guys. It's hot. I appreciate yes, your time. Thank welcome. you for sharing with me. Um, would you have a message to the people about, you know, like, about like just how homeless are treated or how their rights aren't respected? Something that could kind of, or anything that you've seen that's bothered you that you thought was an injustice. Hmm. Have you seen anything the that you is picking one? Picking one. What's one thing you've seen out here that you think is an injustice? That probably wasn't handled in the right fashion. The fact that when they're in an area, yeah, and they aren't really being a disturbance, yeah, why bother? Why spend all the money to shuffle all the mum around and throw them through jail, pull them out, and all that crap? When it'd be cheaper just to buy, you know, supply drums and, and fifty gallon uh, fifty gallon liners. Right. Because when I first saw this or, camp, you yeah. know, some kind of access. Yeah. Help them get a find a foot. That's all. Gotcha. Thank you for your time, both of you guys. You've been cool. I wish you guys the best, man. Thank you. You guys take care of yourselves. You take care and I'll make sure not to show your faces, man. You guys have a beautiful day. Um, I brought you guys what I could. I wish I could do more. I see people that are out in the woods and they got an infected foot, and then I got to do more for them. So if I see people that are healthy, I can just share water, you know. I see people that really need help out here. I know. There's a lot of them. Gotcha. There's a lot more than me. I I try to help when I can. Yeah. You guys have a beautiful day, man. You too. Yeah. So the question arises, how could you ever rebuild your life when you're constantly being pushed from one place to the next? All right, guys. So as the homeless camps here in Florida are being evicted, the homeless people are just forced into other places. So um, I saw people walking through the trails here, and I guess there must be a homeless camp. I see a lot of foot uh, traffic it's just moving to the next, and it's a never-ending cycle. I can hear people working up ahead. So let's see if we can encounter them. Um, this site here looks really, really weird. Well, it's a massive camp here. This is like a city. Wow. My goodness. This is like a city here. Look at the size of this camp. This is a whole town here. This is more like a shanty town. Maybe real dangerous to record in here. Hey guys, how you doing? Well, I asked him if he was taking me, he's like, no. Okay, so this is more like a shanty town than an actual homeless camp. Um, when they're this big, it's it's more like a shanty town than an actual camp. Um, of course, there's a lot of people here, so we're, so far they're ignoring us. Um, but if they notice that we're recording, of course, this could really get out of hand. Um, Wow, there's a huge encampment and there is a rebel flag. Let's see if I can talk to these folks. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Nobody out there. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I mean. 
it's like you don't really get a chance to regroup by the time you. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. By the time I you. Got me a hammock for fucking bug skin on it. Yeah, like what the you know people like they kick you out on one spot and you gotta go to the next and. For sure. Yeah, yeah, no, they're all assholes about it too. Yeah, they break the law when they do it sometimes. Yeah, you gotta know your shit. Mm-hmm. The, the law will break the law. I know most of my rights. But... Yeah. I don't want to get none of you guys in trouble. I'm just trying to, like, let people know what's going on. Because, like, people in Florida, they, the news won't cover what's going on. Yeah, no, they don't. This is usually a camp. That's why cops kicked them out. They kicked it all out. So this was, like, all recently evicted. Yeah, this is evicted. Wow. That's why it's dirty. Are there gators in that water? Oh, yeah. Well, Hudson, Florida, right? New Perchie. All right. So we're somewhere in Pasco County. Yeah. So what is the struggle with homeless people now where they get evicted from one place to the next? Break that all down. What do you mean? Like, do what the cops do? Yeah. They fuck come in, be assholes, and like treat you like a uh, junkies and shit. And yeah. You mean like they basically what do you call it? Uh, you ain't got no rights to try to, you know, you do anything them. about it. Yeah. They, gotcha. They, so th this camp here, there was a camp here, and they came through and cleared it. Yeah, they kicked them out for trespassing, so they got like they. That's why there's a bunch of shit around. Cool. They didn't have time to get through all their shit. I mean, so are there jobs in this county? Like, if you wanted to like work here, is there, there are there any industries here? Well, I went, I went to shrimp docks and found a little bit of work, but you got to have experience and shit. Like, okay. But they don't, they still look at you. You got a backpack and you're riding a bike. You're, yeah. You're, you're a piece of shit homeless person. You yeah, know. they're not ever considered. Are there gators in that water? Yes. There's wow. about three or four of them. Okay. And I'm going to guess that's where you guys got to get your water, maybe even bathe and everything? Uh, some of them, yeah. Wow. So they're literally having to risk their life just to take a shower or get water. Um... What is, have you ever seen anything out here that you consider an injustice that you felt was wrong? Uh, countless things, but like, I don't, off the top of my head. Yeah. I try to avoid them. I can't. You stay it. out of the way? Yeah, I just like, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> um, are you originally born in Florida? Born and raised here in Pasco. Pasco County. So this is your area? Yeah. Gotcha. It's changed a lot. Gotcha. It was beautiful, but now it's like crazy, rampant with addiction. Addiction and homeless yeah. and death. Like, people die every day. Well, what is killing people? Mostly just addiction? Fent fentanyl and, uh, like, yeah. yeah. There's people killing people, but, I mean. Also, like, you see people die, like, from health. Like, they get out here and they get infections and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And if, like, somebody were to die in the camp, like, wouldn't the people be afraid to do it? Like, most people would, would be afraid to do anything about it. Yeah. Like, the fentanyl and the OD, OD they got that new, uh, was it, um, the new act. Like, if you help them. Yeah. Good Samaritan act. Like, yeah. You don't get charged for murder because... Wow. Yeah. Like, but nobody's going to get involved. I mean, like, if I was living out here and somebody was died, I would just leave, right? Yeah, just call it, call it ambulance in. Wow. But, like, that, that brings heat to the spot, you know? Yeah, it does. It always does. It always does. So, like, really, the people are put in a situation where, like, even if they don't want to break the law, they almost have to be on the... Even if you don't want to be against the law, you're forced to be against the law. Yeah, pretty much. Like, they they're, they're should be helping. They should be helping us, not fucking... You know what was Pasco kind of like before it got bad? Well, I, uh, shit, maybe crackheads, but that's about it. There were now it's everybody. Yeah. So. I'm doing it for you. <laughs> keep that. You good? Yeah. They, tell them I'm Southern Life, and you yeah, know, like they know who I, I am. Probably, the, the dude already knows who I am. He already knows who I am over there. They know who I am. Yeah. Let's roll out. They know who I am. I'm not with the law or anything. They know who I am. Let's go. They know who I am. The guy over there, they already, they already know who I am, too. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, bro. Let's go. You guys, we're in a little tight spot here. You can get up out here safely now. Yeah, we need to leave like ASAP. Mm -hmm. So, person walks up, and first I checked in with him, so he can't talk about all. You know, he got. I guess he was like high or something, and then he had a problem with me recording because he got like he got all paranoid. But I checked in with him first. I went to his camp. I said, "Hey, bro, this is who we're, what we're doing." And I, and you know what he said? He says, "I know who you are, so it's all good." So I, I, I start interviewing somebody else, and then he got paranoid and freaked out. While I was interviewing this dude, he got all crazy while I'm interviewing the dude. But at the same time, I checked in with him. 
So it's not like I went to him and I checked in with him and I say, hey, bro, this is what we're doing. Blah, blah, blah. You cool with it? He even says, I know who you are. I've seen you before. So if you say, I know who you are. I've seen you before. Then you pretty much, you know who I am. So what's the big deal? But then they were trying to intimidate the person that gave me the interview. So the kid that gave me the interview had to leave with me. Scared, you know, you had, we had to like get up out of there. But the kid that gave me the interview says he'll beat the person. Because the person I was complaining was an older dude. So he says, I'll beat him up. He's old. Like I'm out here trying to help people. I'm out here giving people water, giving people food, giving people money. Like, I don't even want to get into how much I've been. I've given people my, my cowboy hat. Yo, I gave the girl my cowboy hat. You know, you're out here doing good, helping people that are in need, but there's always somebody who, for some reason or another, has a problem with it. But I'm not going to let him stop me. Everybody, the, I helped the people. I helped everybody. Every single camp that I went to, I gave them water. Some people, I gave money. They helped me. Like, I'm breaking everybody off good. And I'm not intruding into nobody's space. I check in with every single camp I go to. I check in first, make sure that everything's legit. I'm not trying to put the heat on their camps. I'm hiding this. I'm not showing, like, I'm hiding everything. Like, I'm doing my... It's not like the law doesn't even know where these camps are at. The law knows where they're at. They're coming in and tearing them down every day. So it's not like the law doesn't know where these camps are at. But I'm not going to let one person get in the way of my money and the money of a bunch of other people. Because at the end of the day everybody is eating and this is a place here in Pasco County where I've been helping people here before I made videos here so people here already knew me from way before it's not like all the sudden I started I've been out here helping people so that you know like, people know me out here like dude my last video in Pasco County got half a million views there's a lot of people out here don't know who I am there's actually a homeless camp right there but we're not going to go into it today because Katie you look kind of terrified but it is dangerous, guys. You go in these homeless camps, and there could be somebody in that homeless camp that, for some reason, does not want you in there, and they'll freak out, bro. But at the end of the day, I checked in, and I told him what I was doing. He said he knew who I was, so that would have been the time to say no, you know. But it is what it is, and sometimes when we go in these homeless camps, that could become a huge argument. Somebody can get hurt over it, you know. But it wasn't that I'm trying to hurt people. I'm trying to I'm trying to get the word out. I'm trying to like I'm trying to help homeless people. But even within the homeless community, there's going to be people that are going to be against that because there's just bad people. There's just people that want to start drama. Like there we left and it was time to go. I don't know if it's somebody that's schizophrenic or what, but whatever the case, you know, I know that this is part of the danger and um as soon as I left, I'm not going to record everybody that was involved, but it, it kind of turned into an argument right there about me being there inside that homeless camp. So that was kind of pretty scary, but, um, you know, luckily a lot enough people knew who I was and kind of helped me get out of that spot. But, but a man's got to have word. The first thing a man's got to have is word. I went and I talked to that dude and I said, hey, bro, you know, who, I, I'm doing this. He says, I know who you are. It's whatever. I don't want to be on camera. So we went and we talked to other people, you know. But he wanted to dictate what other people are going to do. And that's not how it works out here. If somebody wants to work with me and they want to collaborate with me because they need $20 to eat or whatever, hey, that's their call. You can't tell somebody what else to do, you know. But um, I hate that this situation happened because I was there. But I'm not there to hurt nobody. I'm, I'm giving a voice to the people that don't have a voice. I'm helping people that need stuff. I've run into people... And he knows it because he even acknowledged we talked. Uh, the person that started the drama, we talked off camera. And he knows what I do, that I go to homeless camps. And if somebody's on a wheelchair, I help people. He knows that. So whatever. But a man's got to have work, okay? He didn't want to be on camera. Okay, he won't be on camera. But then he created a scenario in the background because other people were on camera. That's how these homeless camps are, bro. Living in these homeless camps is a nightmare, you know? Um, but at the end of the day and it could have not been him it could have been somebody in the background but somebody in the background there that wasn't part of it didn't like that this person was part of it and that's why i give everybody ski mask um i don't say where the homeless camps are specifically i just say the county like i didn't say if it was newport ritchie or whatever I, I put the name of the county i get my people to wear ski mask when i interview them like i protect people's identity because there's gonna be somebody else in the homeless camp who's gonna act like they got a problem with somebody helping with the video. these people are still homeless I don't understand uh, what the point is of moving them from one point to the next to the next. At the end of the day, unless they can get some stability, they're going to remain homeless. And 
out here it is bad everywhere you look there's homeless people it is just We're making wild. homeless people all throughout florida all throughout florida they're evicting homeless people and uh you know it's happening and at least i'm the only person covering it that it's happening because most local most local news agencies have some type of political affiliation and this is not what they want out there um so i'm the only person in florida that's really covering the situation that it's happening throughout the entire state i'm the only person literally covering this whole entire thing nobody wants to get their hands dirty with this topic you know so I'm giving a voice to people that don't have a voice and some people have a problem with it. Um, and I told the kid that was with me, I said, hey, go to this homeless camp, go to that homeless camp, go to that homeless camp. And I have a good reputation because I don't just go in there and exploit people. I go in there and help. So, um, you know, most of the time, man, there might be one person that's messed out and schizophrenic, but for the most part, dude, um, you know, I've got, I've built up the reputation. Like, I knew I was eventually going to go in the homeless camp, so I, I've been helping people before I even started doing these videos. They know who I am. And let me tell you, when somebody's on the side of the road and they don't have money and food, when somebody's sleeping on a sidewalk and you give them food, water, money, and clothes, bro, that person's going to be thankful for you forever. That person's going to, you, you, that person will do anything for you because when they were down in a pit and everybody looked the other way, you helped that person. So, you know, that's something that I built up that reputation with the community and anybody can do that, you know, like anybody can do that. Like if you see somebody on the side of the road, they're in their last pit, they ain't got no food, their clothes is dirty, they ain't got no money, you go and you give them a water, then you give them some food, then you buy them clothes, bro, that person would do anything for you because they were in a pit and you got them out of that pit or you, you know what I mean? So I've got a reputation here in Pasco County where I didn't pick this, by the way, I work in Brevard County. I work in uh, other counties, it's what Lee County whatsoever, but here in this county for some reason, the people here suck, I guess, and they don't help the homeless. So since they don't help the homeless, I'm the only one of the few people that's actually came out here and like- Hey guys, how are you? Okay. Where are we at? We're in Pasco County, Florida. Okay. Um, so you guys are out here, I see you're working on a weed eater, um, just trying to make it. Uh, what are some of the challenges of being out here on the street? Well. Just a little bit ago, we were actually told that this property where we're sitting right now yeah. belongs to Wawa. And yeah. then the police officer who was accusing us yeah. accused me of going on to the Walgreen, or Wawa parking lot. Yeah. And he said that he saw me mm -hmm. panhandle for money and that we were trespassed, that we needed to move from this location. And I said, no, sir, that's not true. This is county property. Um, he said, well, that white line right there is what was. And I yeah. saw you earlier over there. And I said, yeah. you didn't see me over there. That's a lie. I want to see the video footage. Yeah. I want to see proof of that. You can't just make accusations against me and say that yeah. I, I broke the law yeah. and then not show me where I broke the law. I have as a citizen of the United States of America the right yeah. to face my accuser. Yeah. It doesn't matter if he has a badge or if he has a, a uniform. Um, his actions were unconscionable. Yeah. And he's supposed to be above reproach, but because he thinks that we're ignorant, stupid. no, but you don't have a voice, right? You don't have a voice, yeah, legally. I give her props, I'm not gonna get her head like she'll come to cops, but she won't give him a name. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Women are more brave when it comes to, say, well, I'm a proper, big property. yeah. They couldn't do it. It's public know. property. Yeah. At the end of the day, look, okay, so if you get trespassed from here, you move across the street, what are they gonna do? The same thing, yes. I mean, they treat us like animals, they say that we stink. They say that we um, use the bathroom in public, that we leave trash everywhere. Well, yeah. if we're not allowed to go to the bathroom yeah. in a facility, what would they expect us to do? Where are you do? supposed to do? Right. I didn't ask for this life. Yeah. I worked, I had a career, okay. and I had children and a husband, and I got a brain tumor. Okay. And it, it was like, um, uh, while you were sleeping, only instead of gaining a wife, yeah. I lost my life. Yeah. And... They act like this was what I chose, that I grew up saying, oh, I want to be homeless. Um, I didn't grow up saying I wanted to be homeless. Yeah. I grew up doing what I was doing, and I got a brain tumor, and I suddenly lost my job, my kids, my home, my husband, my family, my respect, my community. Yeah. That's and, not fair. I and don't... now, if you've been trespassed a few times, now you can't, even if you have the money, you can't lease an apartment. They won't let you. Right. And, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think that 
there are restaurants that allow dogs in, yeah. but they're not restaurants that say they specialize to people who don't have food. Yeah. There are businesses that let dogs in to go grocery shopping, to go into the store and have a snack. Yeah. We're not even treated like, like your family dog or the cattle that's in the field out there. They have more rights than we do. And I don't think that's fair because it was just yesterday. Just yesterday, I was just like all of you. I had hopes and dreams. I was looking forward to the next holiday. And now I'm looking forward to the next meal. Or maybe this guy is not going to yell at me to get off the property. He might offer me something to do instead of just screaming at me. Um, you know, I don't qualify for Social Security because according to the government, I'm not sick enough. But according to an employer, I'm too sick. I mean, what do you do? I pray and I know that God will take care of me. He's going to look at how I persevered in this moment. Yeah. And how I judged other people who had judged me. Yeah. If I chose to look at them with a blind eye to their actions and yeah. instead love them the way that the Bible says. Yeah. Then he will love me and turn in that same manner when the time comes to be judged. You know, serial killer or something. Yeah. But he is actually the nicest individual that you ever want to meet. He would give you literally the shirt off his back or the shoes off his feet yeah. if you needed them. He protects and, you out here. Yes, yeah. he does. But I protect him too. Yeah. Because that stuff hurts his feelings. You know, yeah. when he sees mothers grab their children and pull them away from They're him. They're scared, yeah. Yeah, and they take everything from you that you might have to lose here. Once you get in the Pasco County... Um, yeah. criminal system they're they are trying to bury you under the jail oh you're done you can't once you get a criminal record you can't get uh Driving housing anything. you can't get nothing. nothing so it's like how does society expect somebody to go back to normal